I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Comoros to introduce an address by the head of state. Monsieur le Président. President, Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I have the great honor of introducing the pre recorded statement by His Excellency, Mr. Azali Asumani, President of the Union of the Comoros, during our 75th session of the General Assembly. I thank you. Excellence, Monsieur le Président de la. Your Excellency, President of the General Assembly. Excellency, Secretary General, Majesties, Highnesses, Excellencies, distinguished representatives of the various countries and institutions. Assalamu alaikum. Allow me, President, to warmly congratulate you for your brilliant election to the 75th session of the United Nations General Assembly and also to assure you of the Comorian government's full disposal in helping you to work towards the success of your presidency. I should also like to congratulate your predecessor, His Excellency Mr. Tijani Mohammed, for the effective way in which he took the helm during the last session and the way in which he honoured through his mandate Africa and his own country, the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I pay well-deserved tribute to His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres, the Secretary-General of the United Nations, for his commitment to the service our organisation, whose mission and challenges are increasingly numerous and complex. Majesties, Highnesses, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, this session, celebrating the 75th anniversary of the creation of the United Nations, is happening against the backdrop of a serious global health crisis linked to COVID-19. This pandemic has required a very welcome mobilization amongst the international community to confront it. It has awoken a co collective conscience, which at this difficult time has crossed the borders between continents and galvanized unprecedented international solidarity and united the world around one goal, controlling and overcoming COVID-19. I would like here to express the deepest condolences of the Comorian people and government to the countries across the world and particularly all of those who, in the Comoros and elsewhere, have lost loved ones, friends, brothers and sisters. The virulence with which COVID-19 held sway and continues to do so has caught us off guard. Certainly, no country has surrendered, but we have had to turn to global solidarity because this alone can save, it, can save us. Allow me also to very sincerely thank our kindred countries and friends, various institutions, NGOs, associations and people of goodwill who were aware of what was needed and have shown their solidarity towards our country. This unwavering mobilisation from countries and institutions was salutary and has allowed the Union of the Comoros to confront the pandemic. Indeed, after the first case of COVID-19 was detected in the sister island of Mayotte on the 14th of March last, we took the necessary measures and provisions to ensure an effective response to the disease, notably by establishing a coordination system whereby various national and island structures act together so as to properly manage and monitor the pandemic. A weekly interministerial council has been established to monitor and to provide the necessary guidance to these various structures. Several barrier measures have also been established with the support of the forces of order so as to prevent a possible spread of the disease as well as the closure of our borders and the suspension of gatherings of all kinds. Finally, other measures have been taken 
in the economic, financial and banking fields to support economic operators and to prevent any breaks or gaps in the delivery of fuel or any shortages in basic commodities. We have thus managed to control the COVID-19 situation in our country, although we must still remain vigilant. I would indeed like to take this opportunity to call for international solidarity, but also and above all for a recognition of the efforts of each and every one in this daily and extremely difficult combat which we are all waging against this invisible enemy. I do find it regrettable that some countries bestow upon themselves the right to place other, list, other countries on red lists, countries which are affected by COVID, whilst ignoring true published data in national reports and bulletins. It would be more judicious at these very sensitive times that the onerous task of listing countries be the preserve of the WHO. using its up-to-date and verified databases. I wish to commend the mobilisation of the whole of the Comorian medical body and of the political and religious authorities, local authorities, the private sector and all social stakeholders with a special mention for associations of women and young people who are continuing to prove that they are strong forces which the country can count upon to confront any situation. Moreover, the Union of the Comoros, as the country currently holding the presidency of the Indian Ocean Commission, is following the pandemic situation very closely in the Indian Ocean area. A teleconference of health ministers of the countries in the region was therefore organised to discuss the pandemic situation in the area and what measures could be taken together so as to better protect our people and effectively manage the pandemic. Majesties, Highnesses, the COVID-19 pandemic invited itself to the table in our national, regional and international debates and even to the level of our families where nothing can be planned without taking into account this new dimension. Nevertheless, at a global scale and at the level of each country, our collective commitments to peace, development and the protection of our environment are also challenges which have become even more marked and which we must tackle together so as to establish the conditions for peaceful, a peaceful and decent life for all the citizens of the world. So although our organisation, the United Nations, is enduring this crisis, other crises also require considerable efforts so that we can act. This is why the debate around the reform of its main bodies so that it can better reflect the realities of today's world and better respond to the challenges is still a necessary one and is always on our agenda. On this note, allow me to warmly congratulate the new non-permanent members elected to the Security Council. I wish to see effective representation of the continents of the world within the Security Council so that they all feel reflected within this organisation which should guarantee perfect inclusion. The United Nations must also be able to continue its combat against exclusion and contribute to making the respect of human rights a priority. In the Union of the Comoros, considerable efforts have been undertaken to this end. The most recent action in this direction after our accession to the additional protocol of the United Nations Convention Against Transnational Organised Crime uh, aimed at preventing, suppressing and punishing the tra trafficking in persons, especially women and children, was to establish a Supreme Council of the ju Judiciary. This was a decisive step towards implementing the objectives that I have set for myself, to endow the Comorian justice system with a framework which will protect the weakest from arbitrary actions. Indeed, violations of inalienable rights of some people still today in the world is quite simply shameful during this century. The kindred 
Palestinian people is an example. This is the perfect illustration of the kind of oppression that a people can be subjected to. This people has the right to live peacefully in its own territory and to enjoy all its rights, just like any other citizen of the world. The Union of the Comoros thus continues to believe that a viable and just solution must be found which will promote the creation of a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital, living side by side in peace with the State of Israel. I applaud the responsible comments of Pres the French President Emmanuel Macron opposing any project to annex Palestinian territory. The sit any situations of oppression in the world cannot be ignored. Rights, and particularly the right to religion, are enshrined in international ta texts. These commit our states and must be implemented at country level. The, the role of the United Nations is crucial. The principles and values it stands for are brought together within the sustainable development goals which each country has owned, assumed ownership of. As far as the Comoros are concerned, like a number of countries, during the video conference organized by the United Nations, we represented our report on the SDGs, which laid out the work accomplished as part of a global dynamic aiming to guarantee a better future for humanity. On this front, the government is working closely with the United Nations in Moroni and with all stakeholders to achieve the SDGs and I commend the excellent cooperation between these institutions and my government. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, last December in Paris my country organized a conference of partners to development to establish the conditions to meet its ambitious commitment to achieve the status of emerging country by 2030. This was a conference which saw the participation of hundreds of bilateral and multilateral partners and the private sector, and the pledges made attested to the success of this conference. I would thus like to renew my gratitude to France for having accepted to co-sponsor this important event. I would also like to reiterate my thanks to the World Bank for hosting this conference in its headquarters in Paris. Once again, I would like to thank again all those who, in an exemplary show of solidarity, accepted our invitation. On the outcome of this conference, we uh, had a total number of pledges of a significant amount, which was a great source of pride to us, since it greatly exceeded our expectations. Last April, I set up an executive secretariat to ensure the follow-up on the commitments made during this conference and to mobilize the necessary resources for the emergence of the Comoros. I would like to launch a solemn call upon our partners here so that we can establish work schedules which will allow us to move forward with the available working and communication resources we have until we revert to a normal way of working. Moreover, I would like to underline the fact that the health crisis the world is going through does not mean that we have lost sight of important, crucial issues for us, particularly when they are to do with our national sovereignty. My art will, therefore, remain a priority for us in our foreign policy and our demands. Indeed, this is a struggle which is legitimised by this august assembly and in which any Comorian worthy of the name should feel themselves reflected. Allow me to recall in this regard that in July 2019, President Emmanuel Macron and, I sel and myself met in Paris, and our two foreign affairs ministries signed a document enshrining the shared wish of both parties to advance towards a just, viable solution to the thorny problem of the Comorian island of Mayotte, with a shared concern of preserving the interests of all. I therefore count upon the goodwill of the French and Comorian authorities, who must understand that it is high time to find a solution to this unpleasant dispute, as the late President Mitterrand called it. Because the links and interests which unite us make it absolutely incumbent upon us to preserve the higher interest of our peoples and of present and future generations, Comorians, French and Franco-Comorians. Majesties, Highnesses, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, it is my heartfelt wish that the world will overcome this terrible coronavirus pandemic so that we can all resume our normal daily lives. 
and so that the United Nations, our prestigious institution, which brings us together around noble principles and values, can also survive the various challenges so as to fulfil its mission. This is an agenda of a kind that no other institution has ever had to fulfil in history. Thank you very much for listening. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Union of the Comoros for the statement just made. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Nauru to introduce an address by the head of state.